In this video, we're going over how to use the Samsung Galaxy AO2S for beginners. Hey everyone, thank you for joining us today. If you want to stay up to date on all the mobile technology coming out and learn cool tips, tricks, and hidden features, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and tap the bell to turn on post notifications so it can be alerted every time we post new videos. Today we're gonna to walk you through how to use the Samsung Galaxy AO2S for beginners. Now this video is gonna be catered towards first time or new smartphone users. So we're gonna take it down to the very, very basic things. Um, so if you start watching the video and you feel like it's a little too basic, we have another video, it's kind of a next level video that will go over tips and tricks of this phone and if you're looking for more of the tips and tricks and hidden features of this phone, check out this link right here and you will find a cool video that'll have a little more advanced things you can do. Also, if after you go through the this beginner video and you wanna learn more, that is a great follow-up video and in that video I go over tips and tricks of this phone and just other cool ways to customize it and to use it. So. If you pass this course and you want more, that is the next step for you to go to. I'll also have links in the description of where you can buy this phone and also a list of great accessories to go with this phone. For example, like a longer charging cable or great headphones or great cases or even um, expandable memory cards in case you want your storage to be larger. So I'll have that link below in the description. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Um, and just to give you a breakdown of what we're gonna cover in this video, we're gonna go over first um, navigating the phone, the buttons, how to install your memory card. Um, then we'll go over just um, where your apps are, how to get your notifications, how to set up the facial recognition sensor in case you wanna use the facial recognition. And then we'll go over um, how to make phone calls, how to send text messages, and how to download an app. So you Anyway, let's jump right in. The first thing we're gonna go over is just the exterior buttons. On the right side of the phone, you will find your volume up and your volume down and your power button. At the bottom of the phone, you will find your Type-C charging port right here, and you'll find a headphone jack. No buttons on the left side, but you will find your memory card slot. And if you do have a memory card that you'd like to use with your phone, you'll simply need to find your box, find the memory card insert tool, and just put it in and give it a little push to pop out the SIM tray. And then you can put in a memory card right there. That is how you would add storage. And then if we wanna turn the phone on, we're just going to hit that power button one time. Now, if your phone is completely off, you'll need to hold down the power button for a few seconds to turn the phone on. Once the phone is on, you're gonna just take your finger, put it on the screen and drag it up. That will unlock the phone. Once again, put your finger on the screen and drag up. And that's how you swipe to get into the phone. And now this is gonna be what is called the home screen. And here you'll find um, certain applications, just basic applications you'll need. Um, and to navigate this screen, you're gonna be using these three buttons at the bottom of the screen. So the um, recent apps button, the home button, and the back button. And I'll give you just a quick, dem quick demonstration of what each button is gonna do. So the home button is very simple. No matter what screen you're on, if you'd like to get back to this screen, you just simply hit the home button. Let's say you're on the phone screen. You just finished making a call. If you'd like to go back to the home screen, just tap on the home button, just like that. If you happen to be in the settings and you'd like to get back to the home screen, same thing, just tap the home button down here and that will take you right back to the home screen. Very simple. Um, if you hold down the home screen for, or, or, excuse me, the home button for one second, it will launch your Google Assistant where you can then ask it different things. Um, for example, you could um, ask, hey, what's the weather like today? Set an alarm for 10.30, set a timer, 
what time do the Lakers play? You can ask it anything. So literally hold down on this home button for one second to bring up the Google Assistant and then it will immediately begin listening and you can give it a command. And right now it's listening because it's waiting for me to give it a command. So that is your Google Assistant. And again, one of the easiest ways to use that is just simply once you hold it, give it a command like set an alarm for 8 a.m. or what's the weather or how do I make scrambled eggs and it will Google that for you if it's a question you're asking. If it's a command, it will perform the command. Okay, on the left side here, you'll find the recent apps button, which is basically a place to see all of the applications that you have recently opened. So for example, we opened up the settings. We also opened up the, uh, what else did we open? Let's, well, let's just look and see. So there's our Google Assistant. There's our settings and there is our phone app. So every time you open an application and then you hit the home button, what's happening is the application is opening and just as a note, application is short for apps. So app applications interchangeable. Um, every time you open one of these applications and you go back to the home screen, it's still running. And this list is how you know. This will show you all the applications that are running. And a really easy way to speed up your phone is to come to this section and look through and see, am I still using any of these applications or am I finished using them? And if you're done, you can either swipe up to close them out. So now that now they're not running in the background or you can hit close all and it will close all the applications that are running in the background. And this will now speed up your phone to go faster. Now, if I go to recent apps, it's going to show no recent apps because we closed them all. So that is uh, the recent app section. And next, next we're gonna move on to the back button, which simply allows you to just go back one step. This button is very useful when you're, for example, in your settings, and let's say you were to go to brightness. Maybe you're looking for a specific setting to change and you come to this section and you say, oh no, what I'm looking for is not here. I can simply hit the back button to go back one step. And it's now taking me to the home screen. And if I want to go back another step, I would hit this button again. And if there's no more steps to go back, it will take you to the home screen. So it's a useful button when you're navigating inside of an application and you're deep into menus and you're trying to get back to the last screen you were on, that's when you would use this navigation, this back button right here. So those are our three buttons we're gonna to use to navigate the screen. Now, also as a quick note, you'll find some of the applications that are downloaded on the phone on the home screen, but not all. If you wanna find the rest of the applications, you'll need to swipe up just like that. So again, only when you're on this screen, the home screen, can you swipe up to see the rest of the applications you have installed on your phone. So those are all the other applications. I can also see that there are folders up here. There's a Samsung folder that has specific Samsung apps. Guess what? I want to get out of this folder. I'm going to use the back button. And that takes me out of that. I have my Microsoft folder where I have some Microsoft applications and I have a Google folder where I'll find Google specific applications. So this is where you'll find every application that is downloaded on the phone. If you wanted to go to Netflix, hey, there's Netflix. Let me go ahead and tap on it. If you don't see an application that you want to use, then you would need to download it. And I'm going to go over that in the, uh, not the next section, but the following section, we're going to go over how to download new applications to the phone that, that do not come on the phone. Okay, let's keep moving. So next we have the section that's called the navigation panel. And that's, so we swipe down, take your finger, go to the top of the screen and swipe down and you will find what is called the navigation panel. Now in this, excuse me, um, this is the notification panel, not navigation panel, notification panel. And in this section, you will find different notifications that are tied to the applications you have on the phone and different notifications that are coming through those. 
Um, a clearer way to explain that is, for example, I have a Google account on the phone. And so here I have Gmails or emails that are coming through that account. So I just got an email about Google location and an email about a Galaxy Tab A. So these are emails. I can tap on this notification to get to my emails and then I can read those emails and see what other emails I also have that are pending. All that happens when I swipe down from the top of the screen. I look at this section, my notification panel. All this does is notify you of different things that are happening in the applications you have downloaded. So for example, again, if you have Facebook on your phone, your Facebook notifications will show up in this section and you might see a notification. You might say, Hey, I want to, it's my friend's birthday. I want to wish my birthday. Then you would tap on that notification and it would take you to Facebook to interact with that, with that notification. So you'll find different things here, different notifications from different apps. And then at the top of the screen here, you'll find what are called switches. And these switches control different functions on the phone. For example, you have um, a Wi-Fi switch, a volume switch, Bluetooth, phone rotation, airplane mode, flashlight. And also, if I swipe down from up here, I will have more notifications. So just to show you, you swipe down the first time, you can see these first six, and then I can swipe down again, and I can see that I have even more options. And then I can swipe to the left, and I have even more options. So these are all different shortcuts you have to control different settings on the phone. You're probably saying, when would I ever use this? Great question. Let's say you're trying to connect to uh, a public Wi-Fi network. You would need to make sure that your Wi-Fi is lit up in blue because blue tells you that it's turned on. And then if I hold down on it for about one second, it'll take me to my Wi-Fi setting. And here I can add other uh, I can look for a new Wi-Fi network. So maybe you're at Starbucks. You would look for Starbucks in the menu, tap on Starbucks, and then you would type in the password and that would allow you to connect to Starbucks's Wi-Fi network. So all these different switches do, they just take you to various shortcuts on your phone. If you want to connect your Bluetooth headphones, you need to turn on Bluetooth like this, tap it once to make it light up in blue and then it will bring up the Bluetooth menu and then it'll begin to look for any new Bluetooth devices. Maybe you have AirPods or Samsung Galaxy Buds or uh, another type of headphones or a speaker and you wanna connect to it, you'll just make sure that your device is turned on and in the pairing mode and then you come to this list, find that item on the list and tap on it and that's how you would connect to a Bluetooth device. So there's plenty of switches up here. And this is a section I would encourage you to just play around with because you're going to find all kinds of cool things. Uh, one more important note to mention is the sound. So if you want to put your phone on silent or vibrate, you'll tap sound. The first time it'll put it on vibrate. The second time it'll put it on mute. It'll turn off all sound and vibration. And then I tap it again. And now my sound is fully restored. So that's how you would put the phone on silent if you needed to put it on silent or put it on vibrate. Okay, so moving on, next we're gonna go over how to download applications on the phone. You'll need to go to the Play Store, which is basically your one-stop shop for uh, applications, games, uh, movies, books, things like that. So you'll tap on Play Store. Now, here's the thing. You do need to sign into a Google account before you can have access to the store. So if you tapped on that button and it didn't take you here, instead it took you to a screen that says, sign into your Google account, that's because you have to do that step before you get to this step. Now, if you, if you have a Google account or Gmail account, it's easy. Just put in the email address, put in the password, and if you have forgotten the password, 
just tap on forgot password and it'll walk you through some options on how to get back into your account. If you don't have a Google account in the bottom, I want to say the bottom left corner of the screen, you'll see a button that says create account and clicking on that will allow you to create a Gmail account that you can then use to sign into the store and buy applications or download free applications. Once you've done all that, you'll be here, which is the Play Store, and then you can begin to download applications. Let's say you wanted to download the Uber app because you need to go somewhere tomorrow and you need to make sure you have Uber. So you would type or just tap in this little search box at the top of the screen. I can either type in Uber, U-B-E-R, or I can also tap on this little microphone right next to the search and I can just say Uber like this. Uber. So by you tapping the microphone and saying it, it'll do a search and it will come up with an option and there's our Uber app and I can simply just tap on this green button that says install and it will begin to download and set up Uber on the phone. Now one important note, not every application is free. Some of them are paid. Uh, beware of applications that cost money. Um, like I said, Uber is free. So when you search the app, it just says install. Just like if I tapped on Uber Eats, it would just say install. But if instead of install, if this showed a price, that would mean that it's not a free application and you need to think twice to make sure that you really want that application so you don't pay for something and then you really didn't need it and now it's kind of a hassle to get a refund. So anyway, Uber is downloading on the phone. You'll know that it's downloaded because this will stop spinning and on the right here, instead of saying cancel, this will say open and um, then we'll be able to go in and begin to interact with the Uber app. So. That is how you download an application. It's still installing, but uh, once you finish, once it finishes installing, it's gonna be here. You're gonna go home, swipe up, and you'll find the Uber app is gonna show up on this screen right here. And then we can then tap on it and begin using it. So that is the process of downloading an application to your phone. Now, the next thing I wanted to go over is setting up the facial recognition and that is uh, this phone doesn't have a fingerprint sensor so the only way to set up the unlock is either with a pin code, a password or facial recognition and I just want to show you where to go in the settings to turn on that feature. You're going to swipe down from the top of the screen, tap on the settings wheel in the corner and by the way there is a power switch right here. So if you did want to turn your phone off or restart it, you can simply just tap on this power button right here and it will take you to the menu to turn the phone off if that's what you wish to do. In this case, we're going to go to the settings wheel and then we're going to go up to biometrics and security and then we're going to tap facial or face recognition. And what it will ask you to do first is to set up a pin or a pattern or a password because in the event that that sensor stops working and it can't pick up your face, you have a backup option to unlock your phone. So in this case, you can use a pin, which is super easy. Just type in four numbers and then you'll just need to enter that um, as a backup again if something happens to your front camera. So. Let's just do it really quickly here. Tap on pin. We're gonna make the pin 0000. Continue 0000. Continue. And then once this part is complete, the next step is when it will then ask you to take the phone and tilt it up and basically make sure your phone, the front camera is facing your face and it begins to pick it up and read it and it will learn your face for the unlock. Now I'm gonna go back and go home um, because I just wanted to get you all the way to the step where you need to put your face on the camera and after that you can take it and you can complete it. Okay, for our next step, we're gonna show you how to make a phone call 
and also how to send a text message. So uh, these things seem simple, but I get a lot of comments from people saying, you didn't show the basics. So I wanna make sure I cover all of the basics, not just the downloading applications and navigating the screen. So tap on the green button in the bottom left corner here. And you'll just simply type in the phone number that you wanna call. Make sure you are on the, um, the phone, the dialer. Um, and if you're not on that screen, you might be on recent or contacts, just tap on keypad, just like that. And then we're gonna enter the phone number. There it is. 